The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give, that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the, his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I, I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The true gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord, the word, the light. All right, be seated, please. Say so good afternoon to you. Is it possible to live a godly life in the evil world where God has no place? If we look around us, we can see that the world we live in is becoming more and more godless. The thought of God and living godly scares most people. We are pushing God and his word out from our systems, our schools, governments, and secular world. Most of the people are afraid to, uh, to uh, live a life according to God's standards, but have so easily adopted immorality, corruption, and a sinful way of life. Many Christians believe that the world is turning more and more evil as we achieve progress in science and technology. In fact, the technology like internet and virtual worlds uh, is helping people to promote evil behavior, terrorism, and then erosion of Christian values. The fact is, according to the Bible, the world was a beautiful place when God created it. But the choice of our first parents, Adam and Eve, brought sin into the world. In the days of Noah, God destroyed the world by the great flood, and only eight family members of Noah survived the destruction. Since then, the world is on a downward spiral, getting worse and worse in terms of the evil index. We are in the 21st century and perhaps are living in the most godless society. The world is a hostile place for Christians. This is because the worldly standards and lifestyle are in complete contradiction to the godly lifestyle specified in the Word of God. It is increasingly becoming difficult to live godly lives in the world that is hostile to God, His Word, and God's people. The question that comes to our minds today is, how can we live godly, a go live godly life as Christians, as the world is exactly opposite to the standards set by the Lord for us? People from the Bible who lived godly. Now the Bible talks about many men and women of God who lived God-pleasing lives, even in, in uh, the most uh, ungodly of times. We'll just focus on two persons, Noah and Daniel today. They have proved, proved to us that it is not impossible to live a godly life, even when the world around them was corrupt and evil. We will then derive the biblical principles to help us live godly life in today's society, which hates God and promotes evil. Let's talk about Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that, ver and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only e evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race that I have created. And with them, the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. God spared Noah and his family from the destruction of the world because Noah lived a godly life. And then, uh, and then an evil society that deserved God's judgment. Noah didn't allow the world to influence his life. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people. He walked faithfully with God. Noah is included in the list of Hall of Faith by the author of Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. 
Noah remained untouched by the evil system around him for two reasons. He walked faithfully with God, and he believed and obeyed God's word. Genesis chapter 7, verse 5. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. He didn't even bother when others may, when others may have mocked and laughed at his plans to build a giant boat. We learn from Noah that we have to walk... <clears throat> We have to walk faithfully with God in spite of hostile environments and ignore the voices of people of the world to listen to God and obey His commandments. We should have a strong faith in God to live a godly life. Now let's take a look at Daniel. During the, during the captivity of Israel, four young Israelite boys, including Daniel, were selected by... Not this name I, 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 is going to be one of those tough names for me here. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, 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 wow, That's like, I mean, you got to really know the alphabet to say that name, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, for a royal training to be the high-ranking officials in the kingdom, okay, so the four boys, royal training, right, the training program included a diet of the royal food, which was offered to idols, and vine, for three years. This is from Daniel chapter 1 verse 5. Daniel and his three, th three friends were God-fearing and decided to abstain from the royal defiled food and vine and chose a, ve a vegan food and water instead. Daniel chapter, chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. He asked the chief, he asked the chief uh, official for permission not to defile himself this way. God honored their resolute decision, and the four boys turned out to be the best among the royal trainees, and the king appointed them in highest administrative positions. Now, King Darius appointed Daniel as one of the three straps, uh, uh, over 120 satrap, satraps, and thought to make him a chief satrap, because Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. His envious colleagues tried to stop Daniel and incited King Darius to issue a decree that for days all have to pray to the king otherwise get thrown into a lion's den. Daniel was a man of prayer and he didn't stop praying to the living God three times in a day with the windows of his home open towards Jerusalem. He was not afraid of the king and he continued to pray to God. That shows his courage and an uncompromising nature for the things of God. He was thrown in the lion's den but God miraculously saved him. Daniel continued to be the administrator under many idol-worshipping kings, but his deep relationship with God helped him to live a godly life in the most adverse surroundings. Two, th two things helped Daniel to live a godly life. His, resol his resoluteness to stay away from evil and his strong prayer life. Now well, let's talk about seven biblical principles of godly living. Prayerfulness. We have to pray to the Lord daily for our protection against the evil around us. We have to. Matthew 6 verse, uh, verse 13, the Lord taught his disciples to pray in and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. John 17 verse 15, the Lord Jesus prays for us. Even today, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. God's word helps us to know the way of our life and what is pleasing and acceptable to God. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Picture of a godly man described by the psalmist. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. The Bible keeps us away from sin or the sin keeps us away from the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Ephesians 6 chapter 10, or chapter 6 verse 10 through 17, Paul describes the full armor of God against the forces of evil and God's word is the only attacking weapon given to us. Jesus Christ used the word of God to defeat the temptations of Satan. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Jesus Christ used the word of God to defeat the temptations of Satan in Matthew 4. Now beware of the world's mold. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. 
With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let you remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all his demands, and moves toward the goal of true maturity. The world around us is, in constantly, bom- is, is constantly bombarding Christians to squeeze us into its mold. Media and TV are the biggest instruments being used by Satan to lure us into the world. We need to be careful what we allow to see, what we allow, uh, what we allow ourselves to see, and, inf- and influence our minds, which influences our minds. Let me say that again. We need to be careful what we see, which influences our minds. The protection technique is also provided in these verses by Apostle Paul. Submission of our bodies to the Lord daily within, with a determination to stay away from the evil. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our mindset needs to be transformed by the Holy Spirit and only a transformed mind can lead us to a transformed lifestyle. Learn to draw a boundary line within an ungodly world. The Lord doesn't want us to get out of this evil world. Uh, the Lord doesn't want us to get out of this evil world, but we need to have a limited uh, association and friendship with the ungodly people. We're going to have associations with ungodly people in this world. It's going to happen. And the Lord doesn't want us to stop doing that. Uh, He just wants us to know that there has to be a boundary. We have to set boundaries when we are associating with the ungodly. It's easy to fall into traps otherwise. Okay? So kind of like when it says going into a foreign country to respect their beliefs and the religions, but watch yourself. Don't. It's, it's like they didn't partake in the the, the, the ceremony of have, having that the the wine and the food that was uh, set before the other gods, right? So they they didn't they didn't participate in those in those uh, rituals, right? Which which you should not do either. Okay. Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse nine through ten. When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You'd have to leave this world to avoid people like that. It's true. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company corrupts good, good character. Okay, which one? Hold on. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company corrupts good character. 1 Corinthians. Gavin, you can, get, you can get a copy of the sermon afterwards. Seriously. I'm a slow writer. <laughs> I understand. It would also be on video. Uh, it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 16. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Verse 17, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. We can have friendship and associations with the ungodly, but we have to learn to draw the line when and where we need to stop. Stop. Remember, we are the temple of God, and we have to keep this temple holy. God's word guides us to set the boundary lines, so our minds must be saturated with God's word. Shine your light in the dark world. Our best defense against the darkness of the world is to be the shining lights for Jesus because light dispels darkness. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, Jesus told us, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. From 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Put you, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Remember our true identity and let your light shine before the evil world. Be ready to pay the price for godly living. In 2 Timothy verse, chapter 3, verse 12 through 13. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. The world hated Jesus and his disciples, and the world still hates godly Christians today. 
We may be ridiculed or face discrimination for being Christian. We may be sidelined in the jobs and, and looking for a job for being Christian. We have to be ready to pay the price for being godly. When we suffer for Christ, we share in his sufferings, and God is well pleased. From 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Overcome evil with good. From Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our answers our answer to the evil to evil should be continuing to do good. This is the Christian response to the evil around us. Very simply, continue to do good. May the Lord bless each one of us to live in the godliness, to live in godliness in the godless world. I'm going to conclude with the following passage from Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly, worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Amen. It's time for everybody's favorite part of the service. The announcements. Leave it to Gavin. <laughs> announcements. Announcements. Okay. Hopefully this week will go a little better than last week. We uh, have the big screen back and we're trying a little something a little different doing it on this computer. So keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Here we go. You know, you can't make a difference. Um, our, sir, our church here thrives, lives, survives on donations. And that's all we have to keep us going. Uh, there's no other income. We have tithing and we have donations and both have been <clears throat> rather low since the, uh, the onset of the coronavirus. Um, so I'm going to ask you uh, again, uh, anybody that's out there and, and here in the service and everywhere, um, look, if you like what we're doing here and you don't want to see us go away, if you like uh, the fact that we are um, teaching uh, Christianity in its rawest form, in its purest form. Um, if you like the fact that uh, we are an all-welcoming, all-loving, uh, all-inclusive church, uh, please consider making a donation to Dallas University Life Church. Um, I, I'm not good at asking for money. I'm not. I'm not. I, I hate this part of my job, but I have to because uh, our bank accounts are at. You know. So please, if you can. Uh, anything will help, you know, a penny, a dime, a nickel. It all helps. It all adds up, okay? All you have to do is go to DallasULC.com and click on Donate. DallasULC.com, click on Donate, okay? Now, I do have people that come to me all the time and say, Bishop, you know, I, I, I would love the church. I want to be part of the church. I just can't donate money. I'm broke. I don't have money. I'll get you on the club. I'm broke, too. Believe me. But you can do what we do. This is an all-volunteer church. You can volunteer. Um, we do have many positions available. Um, just go to DallasULC.com and click on Volunteer to see our open positions. If you don't like those, Come on in anyway. There's plenty of work to be done. There's always something to do here at Dallas University Life Church. We can never have enough volunteers. Please, check it out. Okay, moving on. I say we're moving on. There we go. Pray at DallasULC.com. Pray at DallasULC.com. This is a place where you can send us an email. It's an email address. Pray at DallasULC.com. Let me try that one more time. Pray at DallasULC.com. Got a little tongue-tied there. Uh, this is for prayer requests. Any prayer request you have, give us that email. You can remain anonymous, or you can um, uh, give us your name. You can ask that our your prayers uh, request be said during our regular daily prayers here at church. At the, at the church, we do pray every day here at Dallas, Dallas Universal Life Church. Or you can ask that your prayers be said during these Sunday intercessions with the rest of the congregation. It's up to you. Pray at DallasULC.com. Compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. Very simple. Very simple, very simple. You have one of those, you can just go to this email address and give it to us. Feedback at DallasULC.com. That's compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. Email us at feedback at DallasULC.com. Did you know we had a podcast? We have a podcast? We have a podcast. I can't believe it myself. We do. We have a podcast. It's been going on for a little over four years, about four and a half years now. 
Um, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a little different. I say it every week. Yeah, I get something different listening to the podcast than I do watching it on TV or even being here. It's a totally different experience. It's just, I don't know why. I hear different things. I hear, it's not like I'm hearing a different story. It's just I'm hearing more into it. I hear other things that I missed maybe in, in when I was watching it on TV or, or here in person or anything else. And it's, it's just, I think it's an interesting way. You can, you know, you can put, put your ear pods or iPods or whatever the things are go in your ear. You know, your headphones on and be on the bus, be going to work, be jogging, be laying down for a nap, be taking a, a nice bubble bath, whatever, and listening to the wonderful Your Path with Bishop Mark. Um, and it's just, I, I just, I, I think it's one of my favorite ways to, I, I didn't understand it at first. I didn't think about podcast. You know, we've got the video. Why do we need a podcast too? I don't understand. I get it now. I get it. It's just, it's a different way. It's, it's a different, it's a different way of, of listening to, to our message. And, and I'll, I think I'll put it any way that I can get that message out there. I'll put it out there. So anyway, you might ask me, how do I, Bishop Mark, how do I listen to, to uh, your path with Bishop Mark? That's very simple. Just go to your favorite browser and type in your path with Bishop Mark, your path with Bishop Mark. Do a search for your path with Bishop Mark. Or if you don't want to do that, you can check out one of these wonderful providers that does offer our services. And that's going to be Anchor. That's Anchor by Spotify, by the way. Podcast, Bucket Cast, Stitcher. Radio Public, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, CastBox, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and TuneIn. That's right. Uh, Anchor was bought out by uh, Spotify. Anchor is our, our parent. They're the ones who we create our, our uh, podcast through. And they bought uh, were bought out by Spotify. So it's not Anchor by Spotify. Did I say that right? Okay. All right. Check them out. Check out the podcast. It's a lot of fun. How long was that uh, that song for? They played that little clip up there. Uh, probably about a minute. Kevin, how many? How long have you been coming to this church? <laughs> how many times have I played that damn thing at church every Sunday? It's twenty seconds. Twenty seconds, and why is it twenty seconds long? Because that's how long you should wash your hands. Why? Because that's how long it takes to kill the coronavirus. Okay, kill the germs, right? You need to wash your hands for at least a minimum of twenty seconds. When you wash your hands, I'm talking about every time you do something. You look, you touch anything, you need to wash your hands. You go to the bathroom, you go to touch the dogs, you, you touch the desk, you touch the keyboard, you you prepare food, you you eat food, all of those things. You go outside, you come inside, wash your hands. You scratch your face, go wash your hands. You scratch your butt, go wash your hands. Seriously, wash your hands. I'm serious, folks. It's ridiculous that, 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 that we have to tell adults how to do this. It takes a minimum of 20 seconds with soap and water. 20 seconds. That's how long that song was. It seems like a long time to sit there and wash your hands. I see people go to the bathrooms all the time. They do water. And they're done. That did a, not, not did a damn thing, but all that did was, was waste water. That's all you did. Okay? Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and use hand sanitizer if you can. If we all become more hygienically aware, then I think that this horrible virus with all of these extra strains and everything that are coming out of it now could be stopped if we're not spreading it with our hands we're not spreading it you know if you keep the mask on you're okay so you're blocked it there here's what your problem is right here in your hands okay keep your hands clean wash your hands please wash your hands get vaccinated that's it very strong important points there guys you know, our world is changing, has changed a lot in the last couple of years. We've lost a lot of people in the last couple of years. The people that shouldn't be gone. And we've got to do something about that for our future generations. We've got to stop this. Yes, Gavin? Um, would it be okay if um, I requested a quick prayer for my friend Michael? He just got out of the hospital and... Um, He's recovering and he's still good, but still. Of course, we'll offer our prayers up to him, and then of course we'll offer him during the week as well. Okay, so we do offer our prayers up for Michael that his recovery is speedy. Okay, all right, all right. Next time, let's try and get that done before service, and we can get it in and take care of it at the regular time. All right, all right, guys, let's rise for our dismissal.